Hey, this is Jono. Are you thinking about building a community but have no idea where to start? Well, the first question is which kind of community model do you choose? And in this video, I'm going to show exactly how to make that decision. Let's go. All right, welcome. Now, communities are really powerful, but one of the challenges is that a community can be anything from a knitting circle or a book club through to a huge global technology movement. So the big question is, how do we make the right kind of decision for which community is gonna be right for you, all right? Now, the way I solve this problem when I'm working with companies is to first of all decide what kind of model we wanna use for a community. And there's three models that I developed over the course of my career that I wanna share with you today, okay? So I'm gonna walk through each of these three different models, but importantly, I'm also gonna walk through the psychological journey that people go through that applies to all three of these different community models, okay? And this is really important because fundamentally the goal that we've got in any community is to build retention and belonging. I'm gonna talk about how how you do that. All right, so let's dig in. Now, the first model that I want to talk about is called a consumer model, okay? And the consumer model is essentially a community where people come together because they've got a, a common interest or a shared passion, okay? It could be a musician such as Taylor Swift or a band like Iron Maiden, or it could be a video game or a sport or a movie or something along those lines. And the good news about this model is that they're fairly straightforward communities to put together because what you do is you create a clubhouse, okay? And I don't mean the audio um, platform, you know, the audio chit-chatting platform. Uh, I'm talking about a place where people gather online um, or in person, okay, if you wanna create a local community. So in most cases, this is usually gonna be something such as a Slack channel or a forum. And the good news here is that, again, these are relatively straightforward communities to build because you create the clubhouse and then you try to get people to come to your clubhouse, whether it's your forum or your Slack channel or something along those lines, and they hang out, they meet other people, they have a common interest, part of the same kind of tribe, and that's where the good stuff tends to happen, okay? So the challenge here is about getting people in and keeping people there, okay? But that's really the fundamental premise of it. Now, the second model is called a champion model, okay? And what we do here is we take this consumer model and we strap a jetpack to it, all right? So what we do is we essentially say, okay, we've got people in our shared clubhouse area, forum or a Slack channel, something along those lines, but now we want them to go to the extra mile. We want them to create content, solve problems, run events and things like that. So what do people typically do inside of a, a champion community? Well, one thing that's very common is Q&A, okay? You come in, you ask questions about something and you get help. So for example, if you go to the Fitbit community, people don't just ask questions about Fitbit, they ask questions about how to run more effectively, how to swim better, have a better stride, what kind of nutrition they should be focusing on, okay? And that's half the value of a champion community. Another example here is that people will uh, either go to events or coordinate events, speaking at meetups, organizing hackathons and uh, webinars and training sessions and all that kind of good stuff, okay? Another example here is that people will create uh, documentation, okay? Um, for example, there's a community called the Fractal Audio Systems Community, which I'm a big fan of because I'm a musician. And not only do people go and do Q&A, and they also go to events such as AxeFest, but what they also do is they work together on a wiki where they document all of the different AMP models inside of the AxeFX and other bits and pieces, okay? And then another really powerful thing that champion communities tend to do is to create content. Okay, and that can be blog posts, videos, tutorials, training sessions, all kinds of things like that. So it's a consumer model with a collaborative component to it, okay? And the key thing here is that when you're thinking about how to create your champion community is you wanna figure out how do we make this as simple and as easy as possible, right? So for example, if somebody's got a question, how do we make it easy for them to ask that question, but also easy for other people to find those questions and to provide answers to them? If, if somebody here is interested in running an event, let's say they wanna run an online webinar, right? How do we make it easy for them to have an idea and to get the support and the guidance they need to run that event? If you want them to do documentation, how do you provide a place where people can go and create documentation quickly and easily? You wanna make sure that the time to contribution is as low as possible for each of these things, and that's what makes a champion community succeed. Now, champion communities are by a considerable margin the most common types of communities my clients tend to ask me to help them build, all right? And then the third model we've got here is a collaborator. 
community, okay? And this is essentially where people work together either on the same thing or additional things that sit on top of a different platform. Now that might not make a lot of sense, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain this, okay? So this model is broken into two types. You've got the inner and you've got the outer. Now an inner collaborator community is basically an open source project, right? So the way open source tends to work, if you're not particularly familiar with it, is that you'll have a project, so let's say it's represented by this little rectangle here, okay? And this will be a piece of software that people are working together on. Now typically you'll have people in the community who will kind of come in and they'll all work on this, right? But then you'll have people who work for a company who may be behind that project, if there is one. Not all open source projects have a company behind it. And they will also work on it. So the, the nuance in the inner collaborator model is making sure that all of this here is as simple, efficient, and equitable as possible for everybody involved. It essentially means creating a level playing field to make sure that the people in the community and the people who are at the company, if there is one, are able to operate with the same methods and approaches and collaborative uh, you know, workflow, if you will, all right? So this is actually a really complicated model to set up, okay? Especially if you're not particularly familiar with open source. One thing that often makes me nervous is when I'm working with a company that wants to monetize open source, such as an open core company, but they have no idea of how to create that balance between those two different groups. And there's a lot of complexity there. However, what's more common is an outer model, all right? And this is where a company, usually, but sometimes it's a project, will have a platform, okay? Um, this could be a content management system, it could be a developer platform, it could be any number of different things. And people want to build things that sit on top of it, right? So a good example could be WordPress. WordPress is a content management system and people have created thousands and thousands of plugins that sit on top of WordPress, okay? And it makes WordPress a really, really valuable, powerful platform because you can use it for almost anything because of this rich plugin landscape, okay? Now, because you're focusing here on people building things that sit on top of this, you wanna make sure that the platform and how people build those things is as simple as possible. This is really about making sure that you've got a great software development kit, good developer documentation, API references, a place where people can go and ask questions, all that kind of stuff. The reason why I separate inner and outer is because far too many people conflate the two. They're like, okay, we need a, a developer community, right? And they think that building an open source community and building an outer community are the same thing, which they're absolutely not. Okay, so just to recap, consumer is where people have got the same kind of passion and interest. You're bringing them together into a clubhouse, into a place where they can spend time with each other. The champion is where you go the extra mile, you create an environment where people can create material that is a benefit to the community. And then collaborate is where people build things either as part of the same project, which is an inner, or where they're building things that sit on top of a platform, which is the outer. All right, makes sense? If this is valuable so far, be sure to go and hit that like uh, like the video and then hit that subscribe button so you'll get more of these videos when they come out. Now, I mentioned earlier on that what sits underneath all of this, okay, is the psychology of how we build communities. And there's a start point and an end point. So the start point here is access, okay? So the very first thing you want your community to do is to make it easy for people to come in and get access to it, okay? How do they come into the clubhouse here? How do they uh, create a piece of content as part of your champion community? How do they create their very first plugin for this particular platform that you've got, okay? Now the output, the uh, ultimate goal that we've got, okay, is a sense of belonging. And this is where um, when people go through this journey of joining your community, they feel part of something. You, we all know what it's like. Like, if you feel part of a family or a company or a group, where if you go away, you'll be missed, where people value you, you and your contributions, that's a really rewarding situation to be in. So we want to get people to that point, okay? So we start them with simple and easy access and we get them to a point of belonging, all right? Now, the first step in here is making sure that it's easy to contribute, okay? Now, in a consumer model, okay, this is just gonna be having conversations and chatting with people, okay? In the champion model, this is gonna be creating Q and A's and, and maybe participating in an event and creating some documentation. In the collaborator, it's gonna be contributing to an open source project or creating something that sits on top of a platform, okay? So we wanna simple access, 
so they can enable contribution as quickly as possible. The next step here is going to be self-respect. You know, fundamentally, we all want to live a life where we've got self-respect because when you've got self-respect, it means that you've got the confidence to do new and different things. And the way this works, okay, let me just grab another pen, is that this is a cycle. So what happens is you contribute, your contribution is well respected, people like it, that builds your self-respect, you go and make another contribution. I did these arrows the wrong way around, didn't I? Um, <laughs> I'm a pro. Um, and then it happens over and over again. The more you contribute, the more you generate that sense of self-respect. And what this does is it leads us to the important middle, the important middle ground between self-respect and building that sense of belonging, right? And this is impact. This is really important. This is where you feel like you've developed enough of a reputation in the community and now you can come up with new ideas, fresh ideas, different ways of working, having a new and a fresh approach to what the community is already doing. This could be suggesting new things that the consumer community could do. Maybe they could actually start becoming in a champion community. This is you being able to propose that. In the champion community, this could be saying, why are we doing our documentation this way? Why don't we do it this way? Why don't we integrate our documentation in our events and come up with new, more powerful ways of working with our audience, okay? In in the collaborator community could be building out new portions of an open source project or new features and capabilities inside of the platform okay this is really important when people feel like they've got that sense of impact then they feel part and parcel of the overall community and that's when they hit that sense of belonging okay so i hope that was really useful um you know Communities are super complicated, but I think if we can boil them down into these three models, we can understand them, we can understand that journey, then it makes it much easier for us to do what we do. All right, hope this was useful. Hit that like button, of course, hit that subscribe button and click the little notification bell to stay up to date with my videos. And I'll see you soon.